16th chapter of Luke. There's a parable, you know, Jesus, when, you know, he, he tells great parables, stories, you've got to figure out who he's talking to, who you are in the parable. And this is one of the most hardest parables for me to figure out, and, because there's so many teaching points in it. So we're just, you find out the part that God wants you to hear today. And then Jesus is 16th, 16th chapter of Luke, first verse. Then Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Give me accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. He found himself in distress, right? He just lost his job. Now you've got to remember, as a manager, he would be a slave, but he could operate like a tax collector. If he was running his, his, his owner, really his owner's affairs, he could tack on, he'd be like a tax collector. He could charge some interest on something. So he had a little bit of liberty on what he could do. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? See, he's in distress right there. I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. Sooner or later, we will all find ourselves in this condition. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. And he said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and make it 80. Now listen to this. That was a very distressing part. The guy's on, dishonest or making deals with things that don't belong to him. It's, you think that's, that's the message, and, and on a different day you could preach that message, I guess. But this is the one for today. And his master content, commended the dishonest manager because he had acted how? Shrewdly. You know, there's a, do y'all remember the story in um, Luke? It's the fifth chapter where the, uh, the lame man is, Jesus is in there preaching and a uh, lame man has some friends they try to get him in the front door, but it's blocked. There's too many people there. Jesus is already causing a stir, stirring everything up. And so they, they love this friend so much, and they're so in despair that he's been paralyzed for so long that they take him up on the roof, and they bust out the roof, and they lower him down right there. And, and I can imagine the people all around say, oh, don't... Don't do that. You know, Jesus is down here. Don't break in the roof. But his friends love him that much that they lower him down into there and, and Jesus heals him. Is it good to have friends? What is the value of a friend? You know, we go to um, Cain on Saturday mornings. We go to Jethro's Coffee House downtown Dahlonega. But if you go to Starbucks or um, any other coffee house, one thing you'll notice is there's people in there and a lot of people are sitting alone. But for some reason, they could sit alone at home. But they choose to be in a group. It's just good to be around one another. Amen? It's just, we just, there's just something about us. We know that we're wired for community and relationship. That's that's a given. You can't argue that. Uh, during COVID, that's one thing we did learn. When we got back in, how starved everyone was for that community. And I, I came away, it was, it was like, you know, it was almost worth just risking it um, because the, the damage of not being together was, was great. It was obvious. It was noticeable. And so friendships is... Um, just has so much value. And even though, like you say, if you're not in relationship and you're, you walk into a coffee house, you're not talking to everybody, but there's people around and that's comforting. But the real need is to have friendships and relationships that you can count on. And we all have them. 
But if you have any relationships, friendship relationships, um, platonic relationships is what I'm talking about. If you've ever had one, then you've had you've had one go go south. Amen. You've had one go south, and you have lost that relationship and that friendship. Sometimes it's just because of you you've been you've been a bad friend, or somebody else has been a bad friend. Sometimes it's just. It's just a simple misunderstanding. It's maybe somebody said something, you didn't go to that person, you didn't talk to them, you didn't talk it out. And so the division, it just increased. And pretty soon, you still see that person, but you won't talk to them. This is not God's plan. This is, this is not what God wanted, because he wants you to have to be surrounded by friends and people who know you and who care about you. And you won't ever realize that until you start needing people. Amen? But the thing is that we all think we're, we all were raised in a culture of individual reliance. Right? I can make it on my own. If, if I don't make it, nobody will give it to me. If I don't go out there and get it, uh, I won't have it. And so what that does, it just kind of isolates you. As, and, but no man is an island, amen? You just can't do it on your own. That's what, that's what we eventually learn. And as we age up, that it's more evident than it ever has been. <clears throat> so I work for a gentleman. Um, he's a pretty good guy, but I work in production. And, and he's a, he's a sales, salesman at heart, so... Production and salespeople don't always see eye to eye. He will do things for clients that I just don't understand it. It just, I'm like, he's throwing good money after bad. I don't know, but he'll come out there at the last minute, go, this customer wants this today, and I'm sitting there thinking, then they should have ordered it this morning. <laughs> Boy, I got a lot of amens on that. And I go, gosh, that's why I can't get anything done because you keep interrupting me to get something else is done and I don't see the value in it. But he does see the value in it because he builds clients. He knows that if we don't have clients, I don't have a job and he, he doesn't have a business. So there's, a, there's an intrinsic value built into these relationships, amen? And in the business world, it's called goodwill. Everybody know what goodwill is? It is. It's just, and, and here's the definition. Goodwill is the premium that is paid when a business is acquired. If a business is acquired for more than its book value, although the words just assets, property and assets, the acquiring business is paid for intangible items, such as intellectual property, brand recognition, skilled labor, and customer loyalty. Amen? I, would, I was trying to think what would be one of these companies. I would think Chick-fil-A would have a lot of goodwill if they went to sell that company. Right? It's worth a lot more just because people like me are willing to actually park out on a public road to get in on private property and get a milkshake. I can get a good milkshake at other places. But I am loyal for two reasons. First off, it's a good milkshake. <laughs> Second of all, they treat me with respect. And third, I know why they run that company and what their priorities are. So that's goodwill. So we know that that's in companies. So now, I'm going to talk to you back about relationships. Amen? And when we break off a relationship, when we let a relationship go, somebody parts ways, whether it's just a misunderstanding, which most of the time it is, maybe some gossip or something like that, we will let that relationship splinter and fall and go away and never pursue it. Amen? And just let it fade and atrophy and die. And if we do that long enough, and if we stand in our own righteousness long enough, you know where we wind up? Alone. And eventually in need. Because we all need friends. Because we all need each other. It's the way that we are wired. It's the way that God built us. 
But our pride many times separates us from people that we are supposed to be or were in relationship with. And we discount it. We don't know the damage. We don't know the value of that. But I'm telling you, there's intrinsic value. There's goodwill in all friendships and relationships that you have. You need to factor that in. You need to repair relationships. You need to cherish relationships. Whether they're close or distant, they have value. And if you don't see the value today, there will be a day when you will know and you will understand. Amen? Now, a long time ago, a couple years ago, I read something that Warren Latham was writing, and he was talking, he was, he was a very successful United Methodist minister. He pastored Mount Pisgah. He had a good ministry. He has a good ministry, still does. And I read, I was reading, he was given the testimony of what he his time that he served at Mount Pisgah, and maybe before, but he said there was a, a point in his life to where it came upon him that he had to start preaching for a response. You know? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of great sermons that you hear, but, you know, if they don't, if, if, if somebody doesn't ask you to do something, then, then it's just kind of, it's just a nice sermon. And so I said, well, you know, that's kind of what I've, I've been missing, and so um, so I'm going to leave you with something that I expect you to do. I'm going to call you to do something, right? Because that's what we're here for, amen? We're here to come in, hear something, and leave and want to change something. So my response to you is, I want you to, this week, start this week. I thought then, I said this week, I thought, yeah, and then next week he'll just tape off and they won't do it. Start this week. Seek out those relationships that are strained or have fallen on the wayside. Don't let your pride get in the way. Seek it out. Restore it. Even if just a casual, just on a, on, on a casual. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you, you let down your boundaries. You should have boundaries in relationships. Seek these people out. Seek these friends out. Seek these relationships out. Do what you can to restore it. If the other person doesn't want to have that relationship, that's okay. You've done it. You've done what, what, what I think God is asking you to do. It may not, it probably won't heal immediately. But down the road somewhere, they may need you or you may need them. And we need each other. We were wired that way. And if this is something in your family, I encourage you to be more diligent than you would with a friend. But let me ask you, man, we're all the body of Christ. You know what I'm saying? A family member is a family member, but we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And so reach out to that person. There's too much splintering in the body of Christ. There's too much splintering in families. There's too much splintering in communities. And when we fight amongst one another, or we, they see us fight, I might say they, I say non-believers, it's not a good testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Marvin, you want to come up, y'all? After COVID, we should have really learned our lesson about the value of relationship and being in contact with one another. I invite you to share fellowship with us today in the fellowship hall after this. Make friends, make new friends. Sit at a table with old friends. Sit at a table with someone you may not be getting along with and restore something. Amen? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.